Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for an online workshop for learning or OWL session with Girl Scouts of the Desert Southwest. Our council is happy to be able to offer these sessions to you each month. And each month we discuss a different topic. So today we're going to cover Girl Scout volunteer recognitions. We understand that volunteer recognition is one of the most powerful tools that we have in retaining our volunteers who are really the ones that make it all happen and are the strength behind Girl Scouting. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to briefly introduce myself. My name is Monica Hasso and I am the Volunteer Services Manager for our Council. My information is on the screen for your reference. While I don't facilitate each one of these OWLs every month, I do oversee and manage them. So if there is a topic that you would really like to make sure that we cover or maybe you would be interested in facilitating and doing one of these sessions yourself, feel free and reach out to us. My information is on the screen. So we have a lot to cover today. And if you see on the screen here, what we're going to do, well, first off, today, what we're going to cover are adult recognitions, adult awards. Awards available for girls are separate, and those will be covered in a different future webinar. This webinar is about adult awards only and it is created for everybody so whether you're someone wanting to know more details about our recognitions available or maybe you're a member of a service unit team and want to improve how your service unit recognizes its members then we hope that this session today will help here's what we're going to go over first why recognitions why do we have them what are they for we'll briefly discuss the difference between formal and informal recognitions then we'll move on to details of the different types of volunteer awards available, community, group, and individual awards. This will really be the bulk of our time together. Then we'll outline the steps necessary to nominate a volunteer for one of these awards, including some helpful tips. And last, I'm going to end by inviting you to join our volunteer recognition task group if you're interested, and I'll go over what all of that would be. Our session should last about 25 minutes, and it's our hope that by the end of it today, you'll gain a better understanding of the various recognitions available through our council. So first is the question, why recognitions? When we mention word recognition, which we will a lot today, we simply mean taking the time to appreciate each other for what it is, what it is that we do. We must understand that the importance of celebrating our volunteers for all that you do for our girls and community is critical. So Girl Scouting has always been a volunteer-led organization. Recognition is important to the long-term success of not only our organization as a council, but to Girl Scouting as a movement as well. You can see here on the slide all the different benefits that we gain from recognizing each other, such as self-motivation and satisfaction. When we feel appreciated and important, then we are more likely to feel connected to that program and continue our involvement. And this is how we ensure that future generations of Girl Scouting and our long-term success. Before we proceed to more specifics of our volunteer recognition program, we must remember that there's three crucial things to succeed. Do it well, do it often, and make it meaningful. So I know that these three keys sound and, and look really simple, um, but putting them into action involves a little bit more. So very briefly, do it well means that among other things, we must live our Girl Scout motto of being prepared. We have to plan how we plan to recognize somebody with time and consideration as opposed to putting those last minute certificates of appreciation together, which, which I know we've all um, had to do. Do it often it means not waiting until that time of the year when official recognitions are celebrated. Instead, create a culture of ongoing recognition in various and diverse ways. Simple acknowledgments, greeting cards, and thank yous can be done anytime and by anyone. Make it meaningful. It's important to provide meaningful acknowledgement of the time, the energy, and the skills or passion that somebody shares with us. Whether that's for four hours or four years, 
It makes a world of difference when we provide a generic thank you note to someone than as opposed to when we include sincere details of why we're thanking them, just as an example. Please keep these three points in mind as we move on to the rest of our presentation today. Formal versus informal recognitions. We're going to briefly discuss what the difference is between both of these. Having a recognition system that combines both of these will do a lot better job of offering more ways of recognizing each other because everybody likes to be recognized in a different way. Informal recognition is the first that we will go over. So informal recognitions are day-to-day -day ways to thank each other and make others feel valued for what they really did. Rather than being an event or award that a group arranges or that council puts together, informal awards are usually actions initiated by another individual. They tend to be more personal, spontaneous in nature, and focus on unique characteristics of or accomplishment of a person. These could include things like thank you letters, and those could be written by volunteers, by parents, or girls, and they complement something in particular, like maybe helping set up the decorations for a ceremony. Sending postcards, greeting cards, posting a brief message of gratitude on social media, or even sending virtual flowers are also considered informal ways to provide recognition. Troops and service units can recognize their volunteers with simple brief thank yous maybe at the beginning or ending of a meeting or even celebrate silently by giving each member a surprise mystery token. There are many fun ways to informally recognize each other and we encourage everyone to take continual opportunities to recognize the many volunteers, leaders, product sales managers, trainers, and parents who have really given so much. And remember to involve the girls in the planning and executing as well whenever possible. Informal recognitions are important because it's individuals coming together and sharing and being recognized for their unique strengths. Formal recognitions is another way of recognizing people. These are presentations that are more formal in nature and are earned or nominated. Examples could be achievement certificates, personalized gifts, awards, local, state, and national Girl Scout awards or pins. GSUSA and GSDSW have formal ways of recognizing our volunteers. There is a process to submit nominations for these awards with deadlines, which we're going to discuss soon. Most of the awards also undergo a formal approval process. These awards are then presented at our annual meeting, which is in a different city every year and at a local smaller recognition event. Formal recognitions and their details is what the rest of the pre presentation will be based on. So we'll go over all of these. Next are the types of different recognitions available. So let's go ahead and continue that conversation. Girl Scouts of the Desert Southwest and GSUSA use different types of award recognitions to celebrate volunteers and community members. The first one we'll go over are community awards. These are presented to non-Girl Scout members for their service to and for Girl Scouting. There's two different types of community awards. The first one is their Community Participation Thank You Award. It's provided to those who have extended their service to us on one occasion. So it may have been um, an organization or a business that allowed your troop the use of their building for an event, or it may have also been an individual from your community who came volunteered to teach the girls a certain skill during one meeting. The Community Partner Award is provided to those non-Girl Scout members who have rendered ongoing service. Perhaps you know of a local church who continuously welcomes your troop to participate in their local events. Or it could also be an individual business person who repeatedly donates craft supplies to your troop. These community awards are presented at local recognition events only. The deadline to submit these nominations is the last Thursday in June and can be submitted to us year round. Recognizing our community members is important because we could not do what we do without their support. To nominate a community member 
organization or business for one of these awards is really simple you just have to go to our website and you have that there on your screen um, www.gsdsw.org you select volunteers and then volunteer recognition under that and you select the community awards once there this is what a copy of the form looks like. It's just one page asking for their contact information, a brief narrative as to why they deserve this award, and information of the person submitting this nomination. Once approved, we recognize all of our community award recipients with a special certificate presented at a local recognition event near them. Remember, while there is no deadline for these awards and we accept them year-round, the deadline to submit these for presentation at our upcoming recognition events is the last Thursday in June. Go ahead and contact your membership manager for details on when your area usually holds its recognition event, and it's usually May or August, but contact them just to be sure. Our next category of awards are group awards. These are awards received by a group whether that's a troop or a service unit. The Honor Troop program recognizes those troops whom have ensured a well-rounded year of Girl Scouting by completing a set of mandatory and additional activities that are outlined in the Honor Troop packet, and that's available online. Once the requirements are completed, they have to be approved by their membership manager. An Honor Troop receives, among other items, the option to purchase exclusive Honor Troop patches, not to mention bragging rights, of course. So in this picture, you can see an example of how these patches look and are worn on the girl uniform. There is a patch they receive for the first time this honor is earned, and then bars for every year thereafter. Go ahead and go to our website for full details on Honor Troop. The President's Award is the equivalent of an Honor Troop, but for service units. The President's Award recognizes the efforts of a service unit for whose exemplary actions in support of the Girl Scout leadership experience. There is a packet that a service unit must complete of both mandatory and additional requirements and it's available online. Once the requirements are met, it's approved by their membership manager. And President Awardees receive, among other items, official lapel pins for the service unit team members and an exclusive celebration party. Both of these sets of criteria required for an Honor Troop and President's Award are actually normally accomplished by each as part of a well-rounded girls-led year. So go ahead and go to our website and view the packets in detail. Let us know if you have any questions. Honor Troop and President's Award are among our most special recognitions because they do require deliberate planning as well as a long-term commitment by them. They are presented at our local recognition event and the deadline to submit them for presentation at an upcoming recognition event is again the last Thursday in June. So far we've covered community awards and group awards. Now it's time to discuss our last category of awards which are the individual volunteer awards. I would like to emphasize that any active volunteer in good standing is eligible for nomination of these awards. Before we get into the details, please remember that all of this information is available on our website. The website again is listed on the screen that you see there. You can either select the green button that says click here to download guide to volunteer and community awards which is about 20 pages or you can look at the list below that and only select the specific award you're interested in. Either way, please know that all of this is available for you on our webpage anytime. And again, we accept nomination packets year round. So the first that we're gonna go over for individual awards is what we call our Girl Scout Membership Years of Service Award, or as it's often referred to as a numeral. This numeral pin recognizes an individual for their years of membership as a Girl Scout. It does include both girl and adult years as a member, and it's available in five-year increments only. Girl Scouts of the Desert Southwest provides these numerals free of charge for anyone who is to receive their 15-year or more designation. 
Service units are encouraged to purchase a 5 or 10 year numeral for their volunteers. These numeral pins are presented at our local recognition events or service unit meetings. You must of course also be an active Girl Scout member at the time of receiving this numeral pin. And you can see by the picture here how they look and are usually worn. Submitting the appropriate form to receive this numeral pin is easy. You simply go to the website we mentioned before, and it's on the screen. Here you will see an option for Girl Scout membership years of service pin. Once you select it, you will have an informational page as well as a one-page form that you complete and return to us. The form was really created to encourage service units to submit all of the numeral pins they need for their volunteers, but it can just as easily be used by an individual volunteer who is requesting their own. Just like that, it's pretty easy. There is no nomination form or further approval necessary, other than just to verify that you are a registered Girl Scout member at the time of receiving it. This is the only formal recognition that we're going to discuss today that does not require approval. It's all based on our Girl Scout honor. So moving on, let's talk about the individual awards. These that you see here are the highest awards for any Girl Scout volunteer to receive. Please note that anyone, including parents, leaders, staff, service unit team members, and community members are encouraged to nominate a deserving volunteer. You can see all the GSUSC awards at once here on this slide, and we're going to compare the difference between them. So first off, you have your appreciation pin, your honor pin, thanks badge, thanks badge 2, and volunteer of excellence. All of these awards have the same nomination and approval process. All nominees must be active registered Girl Scout volunteers in good standing. They each require a nomination form plus two endorsement letters. The completed nomination pack then undergoes approval by our volunteer recognition task group and our council's board of directors. All nominations are due for the last Thursday in February to be presented at the upcoming recognition events. And these awards are presented at our annual meeting as well as our local events. The difference between these awards is mainly in the scope of service areas required by each. Please keep in mind that when we're talking about service areas, that could mean a service area is a town, a village, a city, a school district, a neighborhood, a service unit, or really any sub-segment of those. As you can see, in order to be nominated for an appreciation pin, a volunteer service must have benefited at least one area. To be nominated for an honored pin, two service areas must have been served. The others, Thanks Badge, Thanks Badge 2, and Volunteer of Excellence, all require service to the entire council or Girl Scout movement. And let me briefly outline the difference between these three. The Thanks Badge honors an individual whose ongoing commitment, leadership, and service have had an exceptional measurable impact on meeting the goals and priorities of the entire council or Girl Scout movement. The Thanks Badge 2 honors a previous Thanks Badge recipient who has continued to provide exemplary service benefiting the total council or entire Girl Scout movement. The Volunteer of Excellence Award recognizes volunteers who have contributed outstanding service while partnering directly with girls or who have contributed outstanding service in support of the council's mission to girl and adult members. Again, please visit our webpage for full details on the criteria for each of these awards. We really don't have the time to get into detail on each one of these, but here are the main differences that I outlined. All GSUSA awards are presented during our annual council meeting and at local recognition events. We also GSUSA also has a prestigious national award granted to those individuals and councils who have progressed the understanding of the global aspects of girl guiding and girl scouting, thus empowering girls to be global citizens. This is what we call Juliet Gordon Lowe World Friendship Medal. 
You can see the details here on the screen, and they're available on our webpage, so I won't spend too much time on it. This award requires, as the others, a nomination form and two endorsement forms. It's also approved by the Volunteer Recognition Task Group and Council's Board of Directors. But please note that the nomination form for this award is different and more robust or extensive than the one required for the individual awards and it can be found on our website. So now that we've covered the GSUSA awards, we also have three awards that our Council Girl Scouts of the Desert Southwest offers. All three awards are named after honorable women of our community that have given so much to Girl Scouting. They are the Daffy Tabor Award, the Estelle Yates Award, and the Grace Schneider Award. And yes, the pin for these awards is the exact same, and it's a custom pin for our council. These awards recognize the significant contributions of a board officer, a delegate, a chair liaison, service unit team member, or other clearly defined leadership capacity within a particular area of our council's jurisdiction. Of course, remember that in order to receive any of these awards, you must be a current registered Girl Scout member in good standing. The Daffy Tabor Award recognizes a volunteer from our East Region. The Estelle Yates does so for the Central Area. And the Grace Schneider Award recognizes a volunteer in our West Region. These three awards are the same as the others in their nomination and approval process. And the deadline is the same as well and they are presented at our annual meeting as well as locally. I thought it would be helpful for you to see how our council is broken down into these three regions, East, Central, West. So in this slide, you can see that breakdown. Girl Scouts of the Desert Southwest is one of the largest councils in terms of land mass at over 92,000 square miles. We encompass 33 counties in all and span Southern New Mexico and West Texas. Lastly, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about how to nominate a volunteer for one of these awards. As you can see, there are many options and we truly want to develop a culture of appreciation that recognizes those among us who have given so much to Girl Scouts. So here are the steps of nominating a volunteer. First of all, remember that GSUSA and GSDSW awards require one nomination form plus two endorsement letters. It's important to note that all three of these must be provided by different people. If you choose to nominate someone, for example, that means that you must also get two other people to submit endorsement letters on their behalf in support of your nomination. There's a really important point to remember because that may determine whether you feel it's better to submit the nomination yourself or submit the endorsement letter. And again, I cannot stress enough how anyone, including parents, leaders, staff, service unit members, and community members, can nominate a deserving volunteer through this process. Here on your screen, you will see what our nomination form looks like. It's the same form for all of the individual awards, with the exception, as I mentioned before, of the Julia Gordon Lowe World Friendship Medal and the form to submit your Girl Scout membership, membership years of service pin, which I showed you guys earlier. This form is only two pages long, and it asks for information about the person nominating them and the person being nominated, along with the brief narrative. It also asks you to let us know what individuals we can expect endorsement letters from. Please make sure to fill it out as completely as possible. Remember that those reviewing and approving these awards will look at these forms and base their decisions on them. All the forms are fillable and downloadable, and we suggest strongly that you save a copy for yourself. That's it for the nomination form. You can always fax it, mail it, or email it to us. Please also note that an individual volunteer's nomination packet is not complete without a nomination and two endorsements. Unfortunately, there have been cases in the past where someone's packet is missing either one of these items, and as a result, that nominee does not move forward for review at all. So just keep that in mind. This is our endorsement form. It's only one page, 
or you can attach as many additional pages as you'd like to it. It does ask for contact information on who is completing the endorsement and nomination, but as you can see, most of the page is really free for you to write your narrative endorsing this volunteer for such an award. Again, all the forms are fillable and downloadable, and we suggest you keep a copy for yourself, and you can fax it, mail it, or email it to us. All right, so we're getting near to the end of our webinar today. I wanted to go through some simple tips on how to make sure that your nomination or your endorsement form gets the attention that it deserves. And this is just based off of what we've seen in the past. So here are some tips. First, assume we do not know the volunteer you are nominating. In most cases, we will not know them or definitely know them as well as you do. Second, verbally paint us a picture of that person you are nominating and their service. Only the written information contained in the nomination and endorsement forms will be reviewed and considered. So you're in essence painting a picture of who they are with your words. Third, give us the facts and stories. The best nominations and endorsements include as much supporting information as possible. Facts and figures help to show the nominee in their best light. Real stories on how they have impacted our community are also really helpful. Fourth, have a growth mindset. Growth is key to the success of any organization, so it demands our focus. Whether we're talking about overall improvement growth or growth in visibility, membership, support, you name it. Tell us how you feel the person you're nominating has shown growth in his or her contributions to Girl Scouting. Number five, be results oriented. Do not just say that the candidate is responsible, friendly, cheerful, nice, etc. Instead, give us details and examples of that and how they have achieved so much with those traits. Number six, explain your personal connection to the candidate. Your connection is important. For example, I work with him or her in my role as such. And number seven, everything we learned in grammar school still counts. I know that I personally remember the teachings of my English teachers almost every day for my job. Make sure your nomination or endorsement letter is legible and clear of spelling or grammatical errors. Believe it or not, a tight nomination or endorsement form gets a lot further. If possible, have someone proofread it for you before sending it to us. Just remember that how your form is presented to the recognition task group and board of directors makes a huge impact in and of itself, not to mention it makes it much easier for us to review. Here's an example of a brief narrative that was written for an award recipient. And I'm gonna go ahead and just read it. A volunteer used fun and challenging outdoor activities to engage older girls in his community into Girl Scouting. Most recently, he reached out to all high school girls and instituted a study hall type program where they spent half of their time on Girl Scout related activities and the other half of their time on homework with tutoring when needed. This resulted in an increase of 25% of older girls recruited, a 10% increase in bronze, silver, and gold awards submitted, as well as numerous scholarship applications for higher education institutions. So this is just an example and I hope it helps a little bit. For more examples, you can find a lot more on the complete guide or in the complete guide to our volunteer awards, which are available online. So lastly, I'd like to end with that invitation that I mentioned to you all earlier. This is um, our volunteer recognition task group. So all of our nomination packs, packets are reviewed by a team of volunteers from across our council before they're presented to the Board of Directors for final approval. Serving on this group is a huge privilege and we're always looking for interested members. Girl Scout volunteers are the lifeblood of the Girl Scout movement and deserve recognition. As part of this committee, you would help us accomplish this in the best way for our council. The best part is that it's a short-term commitment, only during February and March and it requires no traveling at all. Everything is done over the phone or by email. So if you're interested in how we as a council recognize our adult volunteers, if you see room for improvement 
in our current volunteer recognition system. Or if you just want to be more involved, then definitely please reach out to us. Email me directly, which is on the slide there. This concludes our OWL on Girl Scout Volunteer Recognitions. I know that we covered quite a bit during the webinar. Uh, we covered why recognitions are important, the difference between informal and formal recognitions, and then we went through all the different categories, community, group, and individual. We also looked at the nomination process, the forms necessary, and some helpful tips. I ended with the invitation as well for you to join our recognition task group. So feel free to review this webinar as needed and share with others. We hope it has been helpful to you. And remember, recognition accents the spirit of volunteerism, which results in a renewed motivation, commitment, and success. And this is how we'll continue to move Girl Scouting forward. Yours in Girl Scouting. Thank you.